Hello and welcome to all of the subscribers of the Global Energy Association. Today, we begin our new series of charts with the authors of the 2022 edition of 10 Breakthrough Ideas in Energy for the Next 10 Years report. And let me introduce to you Professor Mohamed Kajan Azirudin, who is a young professor at Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, as well as the author of our report chapter on perovskite solar cells and their efficiency and prospects in future energy mix. Sir, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, so, what is so unique about perovskite itself that helped solar cells dramatically increase their efficiency compared to when they were using silicon? Well, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank you and the organizers for inviting me for this interview and also publishing our chapter. So, I come back to your question regarding the uniqueness of perovskite materials. Um, they're indeed very unique because of their spectral response. They absorb in the whole visible spectrum from starting from 400 nanometers to 820 nanometers. This is one of the unique properties of this material. In addition, the exciton binding energy, that means when you shine the light, the carriers, they you generate positive and negative charges. They are not together and they are dissociated instantaneously. This is another marvelous property of these perovskite materials. And these materials are solution processable and they do have a defects, but these defects are benign. So they allow us to recombine and therefore enhance the power conversion efficiency of these materials. Okay, and uh, as I heard, perovskite solar cells can also be used for powering, for example, portable electronics. But will this mean the end of lithium-ion batteries, at least for cell phones and some handheld devices? No, the answer is no. Yes, uh, the, the perovskite solar cell can be used to charge the lithium-ion batteries, but not to replace. So mm -hmm. your, cell phone can, your cell phone can have your lithium-ion battery and uh, the cover can have a perovskite solar cells so, so to supplement the charges, charge to the lithium ion batteries. Charging facilities can be extensively used using perovskite solar cells. It's because of their low cost production. For example, mm -hmm. if you start producing 100 megawatt scale, the, the manufacturing selling price can be $36 per square meter. That mm -hmm. puts you five cents per kilowatt hour. So this is extremely cheap. Providing electricity either with grid or grid free is, is possible. But uh, replacing batteries, this is, this, is, this is not the technique, the technology which will do this job. Okay, so if I understand correctly, we could use um, uh, batteries in, in, the, in the mobile phones and use uh, power banks that, uh, for example, include perovskite solar cells in them. So that, that to uh, supplement. That charges the lithium ion batteries. In fact, for electric vehicles, this can also be a powerful uh, solution where we have, we are producing low cost electricity. You charge your batteries and the moving vehicles, they can exchange the batteries in a modular fashion. So they don't have to stay there. So you have a shop, you charge all the batteries and the car who, cars who are going to your shop, oh, they can just borrow the, the charged batteries. They can deposit uncharged uh, the the, uh, the exhausted batteries, then you can recharge them. So this type of the secondary businesses can develop based on this uh, new technology. That's really interesting. And uh, in theory, what maximum efficiency can perovskite solar cells achieve and can it be surpassed someday? Today, we are having 25.5% efficiency. That's mm -hmm. a certified. And in some groups, they are reporting even 25.7% efficiency. Mm -hmm. So this efficiency level brings you exactly comparable to silicon solar cell efficiency, which is 26.5 in the laboratory scale. But the maximum power conversion efficiency of perovskite solar cells can reach as high as between 27 and 28% because they have a lot of potential to increase further the efficiency by optimizing the absorber layer. So there are three main layers in this perovskite solar cell configuration. One is electron transport layer, absorber layer, and whole transporting material. So by optimizing these three layers, one can envisage to reach easily about 27% efficiency of this technology. And what happens then? Why it is only 27% and not, for example, 50%? Yeah, it's a limited by, it's a band gap absorption. 
So the light is restricted because if you take the silicon solar cells, which absorbs between 400 to 1200 nanometers, and the perovskite material absorbs between 400 to 820 nanometers. So the absorption wavelength restricts the efficiency limit. Okay. Okay. That was really insightful. Thank you very much, Professor Nazirudin. Today with us was Professor Mohamed Kajan Nazirudin, a young professor at Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. Please have a great day and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.